Um, in this talk uh, um, about beliefs and a relation of support, um, I will kind of try to marry Kit Fine and Quine. Um, the Fine and Quine, uh, they are quite. They seem quite uh, very different uh, 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 philosophers, uh, but I think we can like help uh, some tools uh, developed by 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 Fine to. Uh, to, to make sense of, of the web of belief by Quine. Um, this picture was already so shown in the, in the introduction, and so I quickly put it in my slides. Uh, apparently on the first Philomena conference, I said uh, that being, logician, being logicians, of course, we don't care much about the empirical world. This was a joke at that point, uh, which you can see in my half laugh or something like that. Um, but uh, Evelyn asked me whether uh, that changed this position, uh, given that it was already a joke at that point. Uh, it, 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 uh, it obviously changed, but um, I think I kind of, there's an interpretation where I still kind of uh, 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 take that seriously. But the, the word much is very important here, so it does say something about uh, the empirical world, but very little. In fact, as little as possible, but it should say something about the empirical world. Um, and that's understandable given that I became much more Quinean uh, uh, in these five years, four years since then. Um, <clears throat> so um, I will first uh, uh, introduce the, the, the project a little bit, then uh, say something about the web of belief, Quine's web of beliefs. Then I will try to uh, give a kind of reflection about what beliefs are in such a web. Um, I'll try to give an exact semantics for, uh, or I present what exact semantics is, rather. Um, and then the relation of support between beliefs uh, that, um, uh, beliefs that are uh, hyper-intentional, uh, and then a conclusion. So, um, <clears throat> so you could say that, so the aim here is to, to, to kind of um, uh, a look at what the fabric of this web of beliefs look like, um, and at least one of the relations between the beliefs that is quite important is the relation of inference, or, or uh, rather uh, the relation of, of support. Uh, you could also say the relation of grounding, where, um, where we want to say that uh, we have some beliefs because we have some other beliefs. Uh, and these beliefs are derivable by logic from these other beliefs. Uh, that's the relation I'm interested in. And it's a relation that is, um, I think, a, a relevant relation. Uh, because you cannot just add other beliefs as supports. They are only. Um, they, they, I won't. I won't have a kind of notion of minimality here. But you just have a, a, a basic kind of beliefs that support uh, another belief, and um, and adding beliefs to that uh, to these supporting beliefs doesn't uh, uh, mean make any difference. It doesn't. It doesn't. Be, it don't become supporting beliefs. Uh, so every like belief should be relevant for uh, the belief that is supported. Uh, so it's a kind of a relevance relation. So this talk will also be about relevance logic. Um, and uh, I'll clarify this relation, this relation of supporting, uh, by means of a truth making, truth maker semantics, Quinean style but different. Um, but the specific kind, the, 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 the relation that you get is a non-transitive uh, relation. Uh, so, so a kind of a non-transitive relevance logic that I want to, to defend here. Um, <clears throat> so first, the web of belief. Um, so it's a concept by Quine. Um, and he wrote that, among other places, down in this book uh, with a co-author. Um, and it's very simply put, it's a kind of a holistic, uh, I guess most of you know it given other talks and so on, but kind of a holistic picture of, uh, of, of uh, the system of beliefs we have where uh, you have certain observations 
and um, or empirical data uh, and uh, there's all kind of beliefs uh, in, in, in a web uh, that hang together only uh, on the, um, the, the observations. Uh, so um, where some things are rather central and difficult to revise, like logic and, uh, and mathematics, um, and other things are rather uh, at the periphery, close to the observations. Um, but these make only sense because of, or they only uh, 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 are useful because of the way that they uh, um, uh, relate to the observations, kind of empiricist account of beliefs. Uh, but and it's uh, uh, it doesn't make a strict difference between mathematical or logical beliefs and uh, like like uh, natural beliefs of like physical about physical reality or something. Um, they are just more central, the first and the latter. But uh, so that's a very very short uh, uh, introduction to the web of beliefs. Um, I said most of that. Um, but uh, the notion of belief revision is quite uh, important in here. Um, so you believe, um, you, you can easily, or rather easily um, um, uh, change your beliefs, revise your beliefs if they are quite peripheral, uh, but they are very difficult to believe because they are um, very central to your uh, system. Um, if you are uh, central in the web. Um, and it's, uh, it's a syntactical version of, uh, of, of, uh, of a theory of belief. Um, so it's about the relation between them. It's not necessarily saying something about what these beliefs mean. Um, so what Quine says uh, in his book uh, um, about Logical implications, the following. Implication is what makes our system of beliefs cohere. If we see that a sentence is implied by sentences that we believe true, we are obligated to believe it true as well, or else change our minds about one or another of the sentences that jointly implied it. If we see that the negation of some sentences is implied by sentences that we believe true, we are obliged to disbelieve that sentence or else change our minds about one of the other. Uh, one of the others. Um, implication is thus the very texture of our web of belief and logic is a theory that traces it. Uh, it's mainly the last part that I want to be interested in. So there's different relations between the beliefs, but one relation that is quite important is the relation of logical implication. So which beliefs uh, imply which. Um, uh, so the very texture, it seems that uh, Quine himself uh, acknowledges how crucial this is. Uh, but the question, question is, of course, what are beliefs? If we want to capture a relation between them. For Quine, at least in that book, uh, it's just sentence tokens, uh, um, which is, it's a, it's a way to handle it, but it's, uh, it's quite far away from any intuitions about beliefs. Um, it seems that there, is, there should be some um, independence from the presentation, the concrete presentation of it you have. Um, um, for example, the belief that the world's highest skyscraper is in Abu Dhabi um, is arguably the same belief as there is a skyscraper in Abu Dhabi such that all other towers in the world are smaller than it. Um, and I mean you can represent it in a thousand ways, you can uh, uh, say it in another, you can uh, believe it in another language, but that doesn't change your belief about it. Um, so you want to have some, uh, ideally you would like to have some distance from, uh, from, from uh, the pure sentence token and the presentation of it. Um, of course, it's not completely obvious because you rely on some principles of logic, for example, which is also a belief, I mean logical beliefs are required to see that they are both identical beliefs, but um, in the presence of, um, of a logical, uh, princi or logical principles, we can identify beliefs that are, uh, let's say, easily accessible, uh, easily seen as, um, as equivalents. 
Um, so, but if you don't, um, if you don't buy the, the logical principles that are needed to see that they are equivalent, um, then for that person who doesn't believe that, there will be two different beliefs. So it will be logic dependent whether one can, um, one can identify in this way um, um, uh, two, two beliefs. Um, So, so we want to have uh, uh, something that is a presentation independent to some extent. Um, but the standard view on, on beliefs, I mean, standard and, 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 and today not so uh, popular anymore, but like the classical view is beliefs as, a, as an attitude towards a proposition. And a proposition in the classical sense of the world being a, a set of possible worlds. Um, but of course, uh, if you say that, if you buy this uh, uh, account of a proposition and, and say that belief is, is an attitude towards that proposition, you have to believe uh, necessarily equivalent sentences. Uh, you have to believe that necessarily equivalent sentences express the same belief um, because they are true in the same possible worlds. Uh, but that would mean that, uh, for example, uh, there are no really mathematical beliefs uh, because they're all necessary. I mean, if you think that they are necessary. Um, so, so they are necessarily equivalent. Um, and so they would express the same belief. But then that's pretty useless to have mathematical beliefs if there's just one. Um, so that doesn't work either. I mean, you can, it's too, 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 like too, uh, too radical side, just focus on sentence tokens and focus on, uh, on propositions, um, or propositions in the sense of sets, sets of possible worlds. Um, none of them uh, uh, seems to be very uh, uh, attractive. Um, by the way, you can interrupt me at any time. Uh, I'm, I'm very willing to, to discuss, and if I don't get to the end, it's not, it's not so bad. I prefer discussion to uh, me talking all the time. Um, and of course, knowing whether sentences are necessarily equivalent is also very, very difficult, maybe undecidable in some cases. Uh, so, so it would be weird that we cannot uh, have beliefs uh, uh, that, that find out that something is equivalent, uh, which would also be impossible if we take beliefs to be sets of possible worlds. Um, A compromise solution are hyperintentions. So intentions could be seen as uh, sets of possible world. Hyperintentions are a bit more, uh, are, are more fine-grained, uh, but not as far-grained as, uh, as, as sentence tokens. Um, so that could be something in between, uh, but uh, of course that doesn't mean that it's the right one. Uh, it, it's a good, uh, it, it, it's, it's in the right direction, and there are several ways to do this, and some will be good way, and some will be less good ways. Um, but one of the ways to define hyperintentional uh, semantics uh, or hyperintentional notions is by using exact semantics or truth maker semantics. I will use these two as a as a synonym, even they are not synonyms. Um, but they are a way to to specify what hyperintentions are. And that's um, so exact semantics. Uh, it's it's um, the main philosopher who's worked on this is, is Kit Fine, um, and I think a good introduction is, is Truth Maker Semantics <coughs> paper in the Companion to the Philosophy of Language. Uh, and there he says that the truth makers of sentences are not possible worlds, but the parts of possible worlds or states of affairs that are wholly relevant to the sentence. Um, so in an exact semantics, that is the case. So you don't, uh, you're not looking for uh, the world as a truth maker, the full world, but just the parts that are really relevant, whatever that means, useful for, uh, for the particular sentence. Um, 
So this is not the same as minimal or something. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, it's, it's on the slides. A state of affairs is wholly relevant to a sentence if all its parts contribute to making the sentence true. Contribute is weaker than um, are necessary to make the sentence true, which would uh, uh, correspond to minimality. Um, but how exactly this is uh, weaker uh, is, is, is not very clear. Uh, I mean, it's clear in the formalism, uh, but from, uh, from the outset it's not very clear and I, I have a way to, to make sense of that. Um, uh, I can find it without any doubt too. But, uh, um, so if we think about the concrete example of the world highest skyscrapers in Abu Dhabi, um, a state of affairs that makes that sentence true may, for example, contain all skyscrapers, uh, their heights, and their locations, but for example, no information about the rocks on Venus. Even though they, the, the sentences about the rock on Venus have a truth value, and in a world approach, you would say um, that they make true uh, even this sentence. This, this would be true value about the number of rocks on, on, uh, on, on Venus, or the, 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 the composition of the rocks on Venus or something. Um, but this true value is completely irrelevant to the world skyscraper is in Abu Dhabi. So uh, uh, this, all this uh, stuff will not uh, uh, be included in, in what makes it exactly true. Um, so here I'm only talking about exact truth makers. Uh, there's only also uh, inexact and loose truth makers, but that would uh, 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 bring us too far. Uh, so we, we look in kind of the, the things in the world that are uh, that we just that, that, that really contribute to, to, to our sentence, uh, like the, the smallest parts, well not smallest, but uh, 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 the, the useful parts uh, for our sentence. Um, so if you, if you have exact semantics of beliefs then, you can say that the set of states of affairs, uh, uh, that the content of a belief is the set of states of affairs that makes it exactly true. Um, so this is a way. This is a this is a way to see it um, uh, to to not have um, fully um, to not have uh, equivalent beliefs, logically equivalent beliefs, to be identical, um, uh, strictly uh, uh, strictly equivalent beliefs to be identical. Uh, but we do have, um, but we do have a distance from the way it's presented concretely in a sentence token. Um, okay, we, we, so we can believe a sentence without believing all sentences that are logically equivalent to it. Um, now, the relation of support between beliefs. Um, so we now know, well, we have an idea of what the content of a belief could be set of uh, states of affairs that makes it true. Um, and now we need to specify uh, uh, the, 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 the relation of support between these beliefs. So you have a graph with as nodes, the beliefs, edges, uh, the, the, the supporting relation. Um, <clears throat> So the relation of support is what it intuitively is, that the members that are in gamma make uh, or support uh, uh, the, 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 the... So these beliefs in gamma uh, 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 support a belief A, so it's always a, a relation of many to one, if A is believed in virtue of the belief in the members of gamma. So it's an explanatory relation it's not just a logical consequence as we traditionally see it. Because exactly we cannot just add stuff in gamma uh, and expect that it would still support just useless stuff. Uh, um, uh, so it's, 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 it's supposed to be explanatory, whatever is in gamma. Um, and not just uh, useless, non-contributing uh, aspects. Um, but not all beliefs that we have, that an agent has, have the disposition to support other beliefs. Uh, some beliefs are merely derived beliefs. 
For example, I have the belief that either Brussels or Moscow is the capital of Belgium. I'm a Belgian, I know my capital. Um, well, now I know it explicitly, this sentence, but suppose I see it for the first time, I would believe it. Uh, but I would not uh, believe it as something that I've stored, uh, that is a belief that is uh, uh, in any way, um, that has anything that is supposed to support anything else in my, uh, in my web of beliefs, right? It's, yes? What about the belief that Rio de Janeiro is not the capital of Belgium? Is it not derived from this one? Um, yeah. So this belief has the power to make me believe in other things? Um, yes, but you will not... I mean, you can, of course, uh, decide to store it in that way and to see it as a belief that can support further beliefs. But there's a whole kind of beliefs that we don't store. that are implicit beliefs that, uh, that are not supposed to have any uh, uh, um, modal force, you could say. Uh, they are just there as, as, as derivative stuff. Um, so I believe, it, I, the, the belief I really store and that can support other stuff like about Rio is this belief that Brussels is the capital of Belgium. Um, the other one is, is like, uh, it's, 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 it's not something that is, we need to do any effort to, we, it, it's not, uh, it's completely a waste of time and energy to try to store it. I mean, of course, people can decide to store it and then, uh, but uh, in itself, you won't do that. Um, so I would like to distinguish supporting belief from derivative, derivative beliefs. Um, and in a map of beliefs, I would say that uh, the supporting beliefs are always more central. Um, and they are usually actions or laws or stable regularities, constraints, uh, conventions, uh, all things that have like a modal flavor to it. But not necessarily, uh, but normally they, they are. Uh, the supporting beliefs. Um, now, um, if we want to uh, characterize what is, uh, what is a belief supporting other beliefs uh, in terms of truth makers, we can say uh, that uh, derivative beliefs, we can do it in two times. First, characterize making true, and then characterize how beliefs can support states of affairs. And then by combining these two, you get uh, this relation of support. Uh, so truth making of derivative beliefs is such that derivative beliefs are true if and only if there is a state of affairs that is a part of the actual world and that makes the belief true. This is quite standard. Um, and then this is more special, beliefs that support states of affairs. Um, so that's the, I think it's quite intuitive, but I didn't, uh, it, I didn't see it anywhere in the literature. Um, a set of supporting beliefs supports a set of states of affairs, if and only if the members of the set of states of affairs are behaving as dictated by exactly the members of Gamma. Um, and what is denied by all states of affairs in, uh, in, in that set of states of affairs uh, exactly makes uh, um, Gamma false. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a, a contra uh, position of truth making, you could say. Um, the details uh, I can't go through here, but are not so important. Um, but then you can combine it by saying that uh, gamma supports uh, this, this, this set of states of affairs. Um, so these states of affairs are, are, uh, are possible according to or yeah, or supported by, I don't know, any other possible owner or words, uh, uh, by these beliefs. Um, and uh, at least one member of that uh, set that is supported, of the states of affairs that is supported by that belief, makes A true. So here is supporting as a relation between beliefs, and here is supporting as a relation between beliefs and states of affairs. Um, I will argue that belief supporting is a non monotonic relation. Because, uh, as I said before, you cannot ask, uh, add some irrelevant beliefs and expect that they would also support your first belief. 
But it's also a non-transitive non uh, relation, I would say, and that's kind of original here. Um, so you could say that beliefs A and B are able to support the conjunction. Like that's the most evident kind of way. If you, if you want a conjunction, they can be supported by, by the two conjuncts together. Um, but at the same time, um, these two, these two, A and B, um, they are, uh, they, they do not, uh, yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll draw this. Um, so A and B together uh, support A and B, but A and B supports A, right? Uh, if you have a conjunction, that's enough support to, 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 to defend the, the, the either of the conjuncts. Um, but if this would be a, a, a transitive relation, then the both belief A and B together support A, while B is completely irrelevant to it. Uh, so it can't be a transitive relation. Um, uh, similarly, in a classical logic context, um, a belief A or B and a belief not A uh, uh, can uh, support a belief B. Um, but then, uh, well, I don't want to go in details, but it's, what I want to get at is, is that uh, the, the Lewis, the typical Lewis paradox uh, um, uh, of pair of pair consistent of 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 of, uh, of, um, of explosion uh, the way to derive explosion uh, uh, kind of also gives us uh, yeah maybe I'll better do it because uh, otherwise uh, so if we have uh, say uh, a and not a um, this one uh, supports uh, A or B. Um, a or B and not A are sufficient as support uh, for B. Um, but A and not E, A and not A cannot be used as support for B. Uh, uh, a and not A doesn't give any information about B. Uh, so that's another way of uh, another way to see that uh, uh, transitivity is blocked. Um, it's a hyperintentional relation, so that the fact that B is equivalent to C, well, I, I won't explain that aspect, but you have to trust me on that, uh, 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 given how non-classical it is, uh, uh, as you see it here, uh, it's, it's obvious that, um, I mean, it's, it's quite natural to see that, uh, that it's not going to be an intentional notion. Um, <clears throat> And so I, 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 I would suggest that it's a kind of a form of relevance logic entailment. Uh, um, uh, given that we are all about relevance, uh, uh, B is not considered support for A uh, because B is irrelevant. These two are irrelevant or to B. Uh, so it's really the, the, the relevance uh, issue that is special here. Uh, so back to Quine now. Um, so, according to Quine, uh, 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 logical implication is the fabric of the web of beliefs. Um, we would rather uh, say that it's uh, um, that it's uh, um, the support relation that's re that that is between the hyperintentions, uh, rather than uh, uh, logical con uh, consequence between uh, sentence tokens. Um, and this is not at all classical logic, what, what we propose is not at all classical logic entailment. Um, so what is the work to do for, for, for the rest of the talk? Uh, to define precisely um, these two relations of truth making and supporting. Um, and we have to... Um, We have to make 
make sense of the fact that there are also logical beliefs in our web of beliefs. So if you want to character, characterize a web of beliefs, we cannot focus on classical logic. We need to open up for the possibility of uh, uh, other logical beliefs. Uh, uh, so the system cannot be focused on classical logic, um, neither on any other non-classical logic. Um, the existing truth maker semantics uh, of Kit Fine does not suffice uh, because it's too far from classical logic. Um, and as an example, uh, it is kind of weird in a classical logic context, so for somebody, a believer of classical logic, to say that, um, that A and not A or B cannot, use the, cannot be used as support for A. Uh, sorry, A cannot be used as support for uh, uh, yeah that's that's one example uh, yeah it's, it's just a uh, adjunctive syllogism so a and not a or b if you have that belief uh, uh, that uh, should uh, uh, um, uh, support states that make a true uh, or should support a belief A, simply put. Uh, which is not the case in Kit Fine system. Kit Fine system is very uh, uh, non classical. But on an object level, I want to stay as close to classical logic as possible. On a meta level, it's non transitive and non monotonic, so very non classical. But uh, on the object level, I want to be as close to classical logic as possible. And for a believer of classical logic, it doesn't make any sense to block this support relation uh, between this belief and this belief. Um, oh, sorry, this should be a B, obviously. Uh, it's a typo. I'm very sorry. Uh, there are other examples like the... the, the, um, uh, the, um, the, the contraposition of these two and so on, don't hold in, in, in fine system. Um, <clears throat> Now, this relation of supporting, um, I would like to defend that it uh, can be defined uh, in terms of the notion of uh, uh, what I call X-relevance. And X-relevance is a kind of, there, have, there is some forms in the literature, um, uh, like uh, Burgess has this uh, shortly talks in his book on non-classical, on uh, 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 philosophical logic, he talks about uh, uh, perfectibility logic, it's a little bit like that, uh, but it's more general. Um, so we say that a sequence, this is just a, a one conclusion sequence, but you, it's kind of largely generalizes if you have multiple uh, conclusion sequence. But let's, for this support relation, we just need uh, the, the one conclusion uh, sequence. We say that it's X relevantly uh, uh, um, valid in a certain logic if and only if there is an abstraction of it that is non-redundantly valid. What does that mean? Uh, so non-redundantly valid I think we can all, agree, all understand intuitively just the fact that if you take away one of the premises then it becomes invalid. Uh, so minimality, minimal premises. Uh, that is non-redundantly valid. Then if you find a non-redundantly valid scheme for your, uh, for your uh, uh, sequence, uh, so that the sequence falls in this non-redundantly valid scheme, then we call it X-relevant uh, uh, entailment. So for example, um, uh, this here, P and Q uh, give us uh, P and Q, that is uh, non-redundantly valid, we cannot drop any of the premises or not the conclusion either. If I talk about dropping the conclusion, it's, it's in the way you usually see it uh, as, 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 as uh, trivializing. Uh, so this is, for example, true in classical logic. Uh, P, P and not P and then nothing. Um, so we cannot drop here any of the premises or the conclusion. Uh, and so this is a non-redundantly valid sequence. Uh, That's not the case, for example, for uh, P not PQ. Uh, this, is not a, this is a redundant 
uh, uh, this is redundant. Just like, for example, uh, from PQ to P, also that is redundant. But I'm not interested in, non, in, the, in, the, in this uh, uh, non-redundantly valid relation, but uh, any result of applying uh, um, any times uh, uh, uniform substitution to that. Uh, that's the relation I'm interested in, the, the formalized version of the non, uh, non redundance So if we uh, use uh, uniform substitution on this one, we can, for example, get PP, therefore PNP. That's a result of uniform substitution. Um, here, of course, we have the P being redundant. Um, I mean, it's not a premise. Um, uh, it's not a necessary premise. But still, uh, we will say that it's relevantly, um, that it's X relevantly valid because it falls under a scheme that is uh, X relevantly valid, that is non redundantly valid. So simply take your non redundant cases and close it under uniform substitution, uh, and you get this relation. Um, it may be weird that this kind of cases get. Uh, um, uh, will be called uh, uh, relations of support. Um, but if we're talking in a, about in a formal way about this, um, it so suffices that we just um, um, that we find a scheme where the premise or the, the conclusion is really used. We have a there we find a derivation uh, where it contributes, and that suffices. We don't require that, that every premise is really, really necessary, just that we have a useful argument uh, in which uh, the argument is, is of a form that is such that the premises are really used. And that's how I would read the distinction between um, just contributing and being necessary or like minimal premises. Uh, and this is, by the way, in line with relevant logics that are formal logics where you can also close under uniform substitution. So um, any case where you have a, a minimal, uh, for example, uh, this is, of course, a relevant, uh, relevantly valid sentence, um, but um, uh, But this one is too relevantly valid in, in all relevance logics I know. Um, while, of course, this part here is, uh, is just uh, the right part, in this case, is just a theorem. Uh, so you should say that P is the antecedent is irrelevant. Uh, but actually it's not uh, um, in, in the relevance logic literature because it's a formal logic and you can imply uniform substitution in any case. Uh, and this is the same kind of uh, 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 approach we use here. Um, so non-redundancy plus, uh, uh, plus, plus closing under uh, uniform substitution gets us to this X relevance. Uh, and this is a very simple relation in the case of classical logic uh, like minimal premises are very difficult. That's, uh, I mean, computationally difficult because you have to really know that uh, can I take away this premise? Uh, um, it's it's uh, in first order logic case uh, um, uh, much more complex than uh, than there's no positive test for it, for example. Um, but this actually uh, is um, uh, at least for propositional classical logic a decidable relevance logic that you get by this means. Uh, uh, so it's not like a re uh, relation R, um, uh, relevance logic R that is undecidable. This is a decidable relevance logic um, uh, defined starting from classical logic, propositional classical logic. Um, so I call that anti-R in, in, in some papers I published about this. Uh, the X relevantly valid sequence of classical logic. So if you take classical logic at the basic logic, you get uh, NTR from it. Non-transitive relevance is what NTR is the abbreviation for. Um, 
Now, uh, yeah, I can skip that. Uh, we can say that um, A and B express the same belief in the logic L if and only if um, they are X relevantly uh, um, entailed by each other. In the logic L, uh, uh, so that's still classical logic. We don't go away from classical logic. We just uh, uh, um, we adapt our relevance to classical logic. This is the uh, X relevantly valid sequence of classical logic. So you also have that for LP. I wrote a paper about that. That's another uh, relevant logic. You can do that for intuitionistic logic. You get another relevance logic. Uh, but we, we we base it on uh, on on on. It is based on uh, uh, on the on the basic logic that you already uh, accept or not. Um, so. Uh, If we focus on classical logic, uh, there you can, both in, in my case and in, in, in Kit Fine's case, uh, indiv um, individuate truth makers uh, as sets of literals. Uh, so, for example, uh, the truth makers of P or Q and not P or R are these P and not P, not P R, Q and not P, uh, Q R. That's, these are this is a way to represent the truth makers. Uh, of course, truth makers are things in the world, uh, uh, but this is a way to represent them, and they won't, I mean, any difference that you still have will not make any difference in the relation. Um, so that's a way to read it. Um, so P and not P together make this true, uh, uh, not P and R, for example. Um, so, sorry, wait, it's, there's a mistake. Second, uh, Truth maker, that, that can't be right. No, 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 I'm wrong. No, no, you're right. Uh, it should be PR, right? Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it was just a, just a typo. I'm very sorry. Um, so from this, uh, um, um, well, I won't go into details here, but uh, the point is that uh, there's an alternative uh, truth maker semantics uh, possible where you get much closer to classical logic based on this idea of uh, MTR, uh, so this non-transitive relevance, uh, and actually it's quite similar to uh, to, to, to Kit Fine's system, but there's huge differences. Uh, uh, for example, the difference uh, that um, uh, that truth makers of A. Uh, are also truth makers of A and B or not B. And this is, this, this is important for what I want to do because I want to say in classical logic domain, I mean, uh, uh, A can really be used as support for this one. You don't need any other support for that than, uh, than A because B or not B is a theorem. Um, other things are that, that the empty state makes tautologies true. So the idea of analyticity comes kind of back here. Um, but tautologies are not equivalent. So the problematic thing would be if you like, have tautologies all being equivalent and would fall back to the classical case. But this is not what we do. We have uh, no, uh, truth makers like, uh, um, like P or not P has truth makers uh, uh, that support, uh, that, that, sorry, truth makers that um, uh, that, that, that make P true and as truth makers that make uh, uh, not P true um, and the empty, the empty state. So you don't need anything in the world to, to make P or not P true, given that your logic already makes it true. Um, and then in a, in a, in a, in a, in a web of beliefs, uh, I see it as follows, like you have logical beliefs and you have beliefs about the world, and together they make other beliefs true. But it's not the truth makers, the, the non-logical truth makers, that um, uh, that should should have any influence on things like this one. So you don't need uh, any information about B to know that this is true. Uh, you don't have to have any beliefs at all about B if you believe classical logic. Um, 
So it would be really weird uh, in a belief context to say that you need uh, anything about B uh, to make uh, uh, this formula true uh, if you already have A. So uh, this is kind of a, 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 a quite a nice alternative to, 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 uh, to Kit Fine's uh, project. But this is still classic logic. Uh, so, so this is a, a truth maker semantics for uh, NTR, uh, which is the classical logic version of this relevance notion, the, the notion of supports. Um, but of course, in that belief, there may be non-classical uh, 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 logical beliefs. Um, and then you could say, for example, that, uh, that uh, you identify, um, um, you could try to also see that, 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 that truth makers are identified with, uh, with, with sets of um, uh, uh, sets of uh, primitive formulas, but it's not always clear what primitive formulas are. They're not always, uh, I mean, semantically primitive is not always the same as just uh, um, uh, the primitive, uh, syntactically primitive formulas. And already in classical logic, I mean, this approach to classical logic, you already have to take P and not P as separate, uh, like, primitives. Um, but this is being developed, but it seems that you can uh, have a notion of, for, for a general, or for some logic, whatever logic, you can have some kind of a base formulas that are the formulas that are not x relevantly L entailed by any set of less complex formulas. Um, so complex here in a syntactic sense of the words. Uh, so you kind of uh, have some minimal formulas uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that, that are enough to make true more complex formulas. Uh, um, and then the truth makers um, in the L case in general could be the ones that are uh, um, uh, a truth makers, so a set of, uh, of, of L-based formulas makes a formula true if and only if, uh, given the x-relevant notion of L entailment, so not classical logic, but whatever, um, uh, given that notion, which I call here NTL, um, it's, a, it's a meta variable for it. Um, so that, that, that A is implied by these, uh, these, these primitive formulas in a relevant sense. Uh, so A, you could say, is supported by uh, 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 these primitive formulas. Uh, and then you have a truth maker notion that is, uh, is really completely general. Uh, you, don't have, you, you haven't used any kind of notion of classical classicality, and it will adapt to every specific uh, uh, logic that logical beliefs you may have. Um, and then you could, for example, say that each belief is associated with a specific logic. Now, if you are a monist, then you just have one logic. Uh, um, and then all beliefs will be uh, associated with the same uh, logic. Uh, but that's not necessarily, I mean, I don't believe that there's just one logic for to do everything. Um, <clears throat> for example, uh, And then we characterize beliefs as, uh, as its set of L truth makers. Um, and we say that two beliefs with the same truth makers are properly identical. Um, but to include that, uh, that aspect that, we, that each belief is associated with the logic, we could also talk about um, logical truth makers. So every sentence would have uh, at least uh, like physical truth makers or worldly truth makers and logical truth makers. Um, and then, for example, um, a tautology will not need anything worldly. We'll just have, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, ha we'll, we'll be, will be sufficient if you have logical uh, truth makers for it. But you can have worldly truth makers. Like, for example, in P or not P, can have as a worldly truth maker P. Um, 
and uh, as a logical truth maker uh, that uh, from P follows P uh, or Q um, uh, but A follows A or B that would be the, those two together would be the logical truth makers uh, uh, for that uh, belief um, so this combination of the two is kind of nice but it requires the the, the, the approach that, that, that I would uh, uh, defend for truth makers where, uh, where you do not require any worldly truth makers for tautologies. Already, otherwise, uh, the approach simply doesn't work. Um, by the way, uh, Fine himself has a truth maker semantics for classical logic and one for enthusiastic logic, so it is kind of also pluralist in that sense. But there is no real argument he gives why the one would be a good truth maker semantics for classical logic or like it, it seems to be, well, you could have these intuitions as a classicist, so the truth maker semantics looks like that. The intuitionists could have these uh, uh, intuitions and uh, uh, this gives this truth maker semantics. Um, but uh, there is, um, uh, uh, but there is no um, there is no general principle that says for this logic that truth maker semantics is a good there's no criterion for uh, validity or something or, or uh, correct, correctness uh, um, of a certain uh, uh, of a certain truth maker semantics while here we like the, the notion of truth maker semantics is specifically adapted to the logical beliefs you have. Uh, in conclusion, so given this logical framework that I haven't completely uh, 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 presented to you, of course, because there are so many aspects of it, but you, we get the notion of a web of hyper-intentional beliefs, uh, beliefs identified by their truth makers. Um, uh, so we obviously need uh, truth maker semantics for that to, 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 to identify them by their truth makers. Um, it's logically neutral or put it otherwise you can work with uh, beliefs that both have a logical aspect and a, a, a worldly aspect to it. Um, uh, so truth makers that also can be logical truth makers. Uh, you can um, uh, think of other uh, uh, aspects to it. You could say, could make a distinction. If you think that mathematics says nothing about the world, you could say that there's mathematical truth makers too for uh, for certain sentences. There's maybe um, uh, like conventional truth makers or something like that. I mean, there could be more than just logical and worldly. Uh, but I would like to kind of simplify this to we have logic and then we have the world and the two, uh, uh, the two together make stuff true. Um, but there's, especially for the logic neutral aspect, for classical logic this already works nicely, but uh, for the logic neutral aspect the details still have to be uh, worked out, uh, uh, such as for example this notion of uh, uh, whether these out base formulas really suffice uh, and are completely well defined, uh, uh, get the right meta results for it. That still has to that's work to be done. Thank you very much.